Now I want to tell you a tale that might be considered a sad tale. Another tale from the graph. And we're going to see a bifurcation diagram for saddle node bifurcations. Now in my example of the spruce budworm outbreak, because we were considering manipulating multiple um, parameters, we weren't able to have a bifurcation diagram that was easily drawn in two dimensions. For this example, which actually matches further exercise 3.6.2, um, this is going to be an example that's similar to that, but not exactly the same thing. Uh, and we are only going to be manipulating one parameter. So I'm not even going to write the rate equations on here. And similarly, they don't give us the rate equations for a further exercise 3.6.2. But what they do is provide us with a bifurcation diagram in which there are two saddle node bifurcations. And I'm going to explain that bifurcation diagram. I'm going to show you the phase lines that correspond to different values of the nutrient level for that bifurcation diagram. And then I'm going to tell you the maybe sad tale of hysteresis in which you can't go back to the way things used to be. It's scary, but it's a very important lesson to learn about hysteresis. Okay, so what I want to do here is first explain the bifurcation diagram a little bit. Remember that bifurcation diagrams on the horizontal axis will have the value of one single parameter that we're varying. And then on the vertical axis, they're going to show you the fixed point for whatever system we're working with. So in this case, consider that we have rate equations that describe the rate of change for our one variable. The variable is water cloudiness. And on the bifurcation diagram, I'm just graphing what are the equilibrium points for that system as I vary the parameter of nutrient level. The idea is that we have some sort of beautiful pristine pond, and the cloudiness of the water in that pond depends on the nutrient level, of, um, which is the parameter we're varying of that system. Okay, so I'll walk you through the bifurcation diagram first. This is the same that we have here. I kind of changed the numbers a little bit so I wouldn't be exactly answering the question, but a lot of what I'm going to say is kind of like the answers to these questions. Um, first question says, if nutrient level is 0 0.2, approximately what will the water cloudiness be? Okay, so remember that here we're talking about fixing the nutrient level. So let's say the nutrient level, we'll pretend it's at 0 0.2. What is the predicted water cloudiness? Well, that's going to be the location of the single stable equilibrium point, which is at a very low value of water cloudiness. If I had put tick marks on here, I could give you a number for that, but we're just playing a pretend game. So I'll just call it a little bit of cloudiness. I can see the bottom of that pond and I have no problem jumping in and swimming around. It looks nice and pristine clear. When my nutrient level is low, I'm always going to have predicted just a stable, low level of cloudiness in my water. Now, that's also illustrated here. I've given you the phase line for one particular value of the nutrient level, which is 0 0.1. That would be like looking right here on the bifurcation diagram. And you can see there's just that one stable fixed point. And just looking at this one phase line, we see the water cloudiness is pretty low, and that water is looking pretty good to me. What happens as we increase the nutrient level? Well, as we increase the nutrient level, you're going to see right here a saddle node bifurcation, a blue sky bifurcation occur. Because where we once had just one fixed point, one equilibrium point, all of a sudden, out of the blue, comes two more equilibrium points. They get born right here. And at the very point that they get born, which I've chosen to mark as nutrient level 0.3, at that very point, it would just be one equilibrium point, which is half stable and half unstable. And then as you go to the right of that, then you get three equilibria, where it goes stable, unstable, stable. Okay, That's why it's called the saddle node bifurcation, because at the point of the bifurcation right here, n is equal to 3, is the place where the saddle node bifurcation occurs. Right here, okay, that's where these two fixed points are just getting born, and you can see them as merged together as one, one node, which is stable from the bottom and unstable from the top. Oh, sorry, stable from the top and unstable from the bottom, 
And so right here, this is one node right there. Okay, well, let's assume that the place we came from was a place where we were nice and stable at a low value of water cloudiness. Even if I increase the nutrient level bit by bit, I would still be in the basin of attraction for this lower equilibrium point. That's why it's really important to tie in those concepts of basin of attraction and stability, right? Because if I'm coming from over here at a low value of nutrients, then I'm going to stay at this lower level. And I'm in the, you see the basin of attraction for this stable fixed point is all these values here. So even if my nutrient level is fluctuating a little bit, as long as my nutrient level remains underneath this unstable point, which is separating the basins of attraction for these two stable points, as long as I stay in this zone of water cloudiness, I will be attracted to this stable equilibrium point, and so my water cloudiness will be relatively low. Okay? And that's all well and good. And so think about this in terms of a story of a pond. I have this beautiful, pristine pond in my backyard. I love taking swims in it, and it's always crystal clear. Now, as I start to garden more and more, and more of my fertilizer from my garden runoff starts to funnel into that pond, my nutrient level causes just a slow, a very slow and gradual increase in water cloudiness. And I'm like, you know what, that's not a big deal. Um, now I'm swimming around eating fresh carrots and collard greens and what have you. And so I don't really mind that it got just a little bit cloudier. That's not a big deal to me. All of a sudden, at nutrient level 0 0.7, what happens to this stable equilibrium point? It starts to merge with this unstable branch and then right here at nutrient level 0.7, another saddle node bifurcation occurs, kind of in the backwards direction where we have these two things come together and then disappear. Okay, I've kind of illustrated that over here where you can see that as my cloud, as my nutrient level increased, it got just a little bit cloudier. I don't really mind. But then when I increase my nutrient level from 0 0.7, to 0.71, just on the other side of this line, all of a sudden, this stable equilibrium is gone. And so all of a sudden, what looked like it was a nice, just a little bit cloudy lake, turns into a super cloudy, super mucky, not so swimmy looking lake. And you're like, what the heck happened? What happened? Saddle node bifurcation is what happens. You just you're traveling along here, and little did you know, unbeknownst to you, there was this whole other branch of staple behavior that could possibly happen. You didn't notice it because where you came from, your basin of attraction was always below this level. See, so you didn't notice it until your happy place was gone. And then when you increase the nutrient level above 0.7, now the only stable equilibrium point left is one such that your water cloudiness is just disgustingly high. And you're like, what the heck happened? I've been increasing my nutrient level this whole time and nothing out of the blue, nothing noticeable has been happening to me. And then all of a sudden I just increase it just a little bit more and now my lake is ruined. Now I'm up here. Let's say my nutrient level is 0 0.8 or 0 0.9. You just have the muckiest water ever, okay? And that's uh, the point at which another saddle node bifurcation occurs. See, saddle node bifurcation occurs again, another one right here. Now for the sad part of the story. Let's say that you increase your nutrient level so much that all of a sudden your system has made this crazy switch and you have really, really cloudy water. Of course, you'll be naturally inclined to try to take it back. You, try to, you want to go back to the way things used to be where you're swimming around in that nice lake. So now you're up here because your nutrient level is so high and this is the only, right here, the only possible stable steady state. And you think that if you decrease your nutrient level and you go back that way, you're going to go back to the way things used to be. But what I'm describing here is a phenomenon known as hysteresis, in which you can't go back to the way things used to be. Because look what happens if you're already over here, up here, and you start to decrease the nutrient level. Now you're in the basin of attraction for the higher equilibrium point. 
The one that you didn't even know existed when you were coming at it from below here. You were oblivious to the fact that your leg could have been behaving this way had you started with an initial condition that was sufficiently high enough. And now, since you took it to the other side of that second saddle node bifurcation, now you're up in that zone. And you're like, my leg is so gross, I don't even want to get in it. Well, maybe if I turn down the nutrient level, I'll go back to how it used to be. It's not going to go back to the way things used to be. It's stuck up here on the higher branch of stability. You can see it on the bifurcation diagram too. You're stuck up here in a zone where now your water cloudiness is super hot. And what you're thinking is, now hold on, when I look at my garden book, which I'm taking very good notes of all my gardening activities, when my nutrient level was at 0 0.5 back a couple months ago, I had a nice clear lake. And now, sure, I took it too far, I didn't mean it, now I want to take it back, and I'm again at nutrient level 0 0.5, but my water's gross. I want to be here, but it's impossible because I'm stuck up here. And in order to make it down there, you would have to clean out your lake. If you're going to maintain the same nutrient level, you'd have to clean it out some other way so that your initial condition was outside of the basin of attraction for the high fixed point, and it bumped down into the basin of attraction for the lower fixed point. If you're not able to clean your leg some other way, if there's no other way to remove those nutrients other than lowering your nutrient level, the fact of the matter is, if you took it too far and you got stuck on the upper branch, how low do you have to go on the nutrient level list? Um, how, long, how low do you have to go on the nutrient level so that you can get back down to the lower stable branch? You have to go all the way back down to the first saddle node bifurcation such that the high stable steady state disappears and then you're shot back down to the clear water category. So that's the story of hysteresis. It's kind of a frustrating one in which you went somewhere and you didn't notice that bad news could happen until it was too late. And then when you try to take it back, you can't take it back until you go really far back. And then next time, I hope you learned your lesson and you don't take it too far again.